It's stock and barrel wallet review time. I really like doing these reviews because we get to see what you're spending your hard earned money on and we get to rank it on our newly named Anvil scale here. Um, that was the most liked comment in the Craft and Lore video. So that's gonna be the name tentatively. If someone comes up with a better name in this comment section, I'm open to changing it. But I love doing these wallet reviews because not only do you get to see what you're spending your hard earned money on, because some of these wallets are really expensive, but also I love just, designing wallets is one of my favorite things to design. And so seeing what other people are doing and how they're doing it and different construction techniques is really fun for me to do too. So let's get to the stock and barrel wallet. This is their Western wallet. I really like stock and barrels style because it's kind of a modern Western style and it's kind of unique amongst all the other leather workers. So let's, uh, let's look at this wallet. Also full disclosure, Parker and Whitney, the owners of Stock and Barrel are some friends of mine. They're also from Utah, down in Ogden, Utah. And to keep it as fair as possible, I didn't tell them I was ordering one of their wallets. So I ordered, ordered it under a fake name so that they, I just got one of their general production wallets so I can make it as fair as possible. So let's talk about the wallet now that we've got all that out of the way. While we are opening up the wallet and stuffing some cards into it, let's talk about some of the features and some of the key points from their website. So this is their Western vertical wallet. I got it in the chestnut leather, which is a bridal leather from Wicked and Craig. It's machine sewn, more like the Bellroy wallet and not hand sewn like the Craft and Lore wallet and has four card pockets on the inside and then two larger hidden pockets behind the card pockets that you can stuff cards or cash into. And it's got these nice accents, um, kind of like that Western style accents that I really like. Maybe add a little rigidity and strength to the wallet, but I think mostly it's aesthetic. Now let's talk about some of the things that we're going to review in every single wallet that we review once we get it open and can kind of see it for ourselves. The first one being the edge finishing or the burnishing. This one isn't burnished, it's got edge paint and it is exactly what it sounds like. It's just paint that is applied to the edge. A lot of finer leather wallets and like Italian brands are gonna use edge paint instead of burnishing because it seals the edge more and so you don't get those loose fibers. And it's, um, some people think it's a more finished look, but it's, it's more personal preference. I've never even really worked with edge paint, so I don't, I don't know how long it lasts and if it lasts. So let me know what you guys think of edge paint, if you've had any experience with wallets with edge paint, if it lasts longer than a burnish. But they, they do a really good job at making sure every single piece of this wallet has edge paint on it. Even these inside pockets have a little layer of edge paint. Edge paint's kind of tricky though, because if, if you don't have your edges perfectly leveled, it shows any little divot or bump. But you know, this is a Western style wallet and it's kind of on the little, little bit more on the rugged side of things. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Next is the, the sewing and the thread. So this is machine sewn rather than hand sewn, kind of like what we do with our wallets and with the Craft and Lore wallet. Usually with the machine sewn wallet or anything that's machine sewn, you're gonna have a top side that's gonna be a cleaner, nicer looking stitch. And then the, the back side or the underside is sometimes gonna have like the little feed dog marks on here. And they do a really good job of not having those, those marks from the sewing machine on the inside. They use a pretty thick thread for a sewing machine. You know, it's not, overly gaudy, but it's not thin like the Bellroy was. It's a nice medium um, size thread, but not so thin that you're gonna lose any longevity in the thread. Machine sewing has a few advantages. It's cheaper to do because you can machine sew a wallet a lot faster. Like if you're gonna hand sew this wallet, it would take so freaking long because you've got all this stitching here, all the internal stitching and the different pocket stitching. So this wallet's $68 machine sewn. If you were gonna buy a hand sewn, it'd probably be double the price is my guess. Is it as durable? No, but most people have machine sewn wallets and don't really have issues with it. This wallet also comes with a lifetime warranty, which is really cool. And it's, that's nice because with machine sewn wallet, you might have some fears of an, a stitch popping right here down at the bottom or it coming unraveled, but with a lifetime warranty, you don't really have to worry about it. So that's really nice. Um, and that kind of brings us to the leather. So the leather is a Wicked and Craig bridal leather. Bridal leather is a more dry leather. It's a, it's a little bit more stiff of a leather, so this wallet's gonna take a little bit longer to break in, but it's gonna develop some patina with age, and it's a full grain leather. Now to the thickness of the leather. It is about one and a half millimeters for the inside pockets. We do our wallets about that same thickness. Craft and Lore is around two millimeters, and the Bellroy is like around one millimeter, a little bit less than one millimeter. With this many layers of leather, you just have to keep in mind that you're gonna have a pretty bulky wallet. You know, that's kind of why Bellroy does a thinner leather on their wallets. 
But if you're fine with that, it's a, it's a really good thickness to go with. I love the design of it. I think it's super clean. And like I said, they, they, do, they do an amazing job of riding that edge between refined styling and Western styling, rugged, and you know, it's just, I think they balance it really well. Now that we got all that figured out and kind of a preliminary analysis, let's cut this thing open and see how it's structured and see if there's anything else hiding inside of it. Okay, we got it all torn apart and uh, I'm pretty impressed with the strength of this thread. A lot of those cheaper wallets, like that $10 Amazon wallet, once I had one thread pop, I could just unravel the entire thing. With this one, they did a really good job at back stitching in certain areas and the overall strength of the thread is really strong. It's really hard to just break by hand. The edge paint is really tough too. It actually is really strongly bonded to the edge. When you pull the edge paint off, it actually pulls some of the fibers with it, which is really good. It's a good sign. It's a pretty smart construction. They got the cutouts so that the pockets line up really nicely, so it's it's an even thickness that they're stitching through. I like they have a little bit extra room up here to have three complete stitches on the top pocket. I like that they have a lot of stitches that hold this pocket piece to the back pocket piece because a lot of wallet companies will do one or two stitches and after some use, your card's gonna cut through that. But these guys have a lot of stitches, which is a nice amount of reinforcement. So overall, I think it's a really good wallet, especially for the price because you're getting a, a top grade leather. You're getting some of the best leather in the world. You're getting a really nice style with a lot of construction in it. Some time was spent on the edge paint and for $68, you know, it's, I think it's a pretty good deal. One thing I, I wish was a little bit different with this wallet is the pockets. The cards go in the pockets really deep, which is great for security, but it can kind of make it hard to grab that card. That's really my only criticism with the design of the wallet because your finger kind of tries to catch that layer of leather before it grabs the card. If it was just a little bit higher, it'd be a little bit easier to grab that card. And that's usually what these little swoops and cutouts are for so that you can get your finger behind the cards and pull them out. These cards fit really deep down in there, which is probably for security. So it's a trade off either way. Do you want your cards more secure and harder to pull out or do you want them easier to access and potentially a little less secure? Um, but overall, if I were to put it on my, on our anvil scale here, I'd put it right about in this area. It, so I would put it a little bit more on the refined side compared to, to uh, craft and lore. Um, maybe not quite as high of a quality because they're not using um, hand sewing and they're using a thinner thread. I think the leather's on par with each other. The construction's on par. So just kind of in that general area. It's a good wallet. And a lot of people, they complain about the price of these wallets. But the thing that's really great about supporting a company like Stock and Barrel or Craft and Lore or my company is you're supporting the person directly. You're not supporting a company that's making a wallet for another company by another company that's made somewhere offshore in a factory where, let's be real, like subpar living conditions and working conditions. Every time you buy one of these wallets from one of these makers, you're affecting their life directly and you're getting something that they made with their blood, sweat and tears and something that has a lot more life and meaning to it. So that's why I really love and endorse these wallets because you're helping support artists directly. So that wraps up the stock and barrel review. I'll put a link to their website in the description. I'm not sure what wallet we're gonna do next. I think maybe Little King Goods is next. He's another handmade leather wallet maker on YouTube. If you like watching these videos where we're tearing apart wallets, these are the wallets I really need your guys' support on because these are not nearly as 
SEO friendly and so they don't get as much traffic, but I love doing them. So be sure to like and subscribe and comment so that I can keep doing these because they're so much fun. And thanks for all your guys' support. See ya.